head of Pfizer research says that the COVID vaccine is female sterilization. Let's talk about it. Hey friends, welcome back. Today I am talking about the viral post that I've gotten slammed on Instagram about, which is a blog post by a former person who worked at Pfizer, but it says head of Pfizer research, COVID vaccine is female sterilization. This has been shared so many times. It's on Facebook groups. It was sent to me on Instagram a bajillion times and it is based out of fear. So let's break down where this comes from and what we know about this topic. First of all, for those of you who don't know, I'm a fertility doctor. I am here to talk about fertility awareness. And so I would love it if you would subscribe and support the channel so we can spread fertility-based facts to more people. All right, who would have thought when I had my first COVID video back in March, when this stuff first happened, that here we would be in December still talking about it. So today is December 9th, 2020, and I am talking about this COVID vaccine and the myth that it is causing infertility. So it's a myth. It, there's, it's unfounded. There is no evidence to support this. But what do we know about COVID right now? And why are people even saying this? Is that we don't have any evidence that the vaccine causes infertility and certainly not female sterilization. Where this even comes from, the cause or the hypothesis for this argument is that there is a amino acid sequence. So four out of the five amino acids match the sequence for a protein called syncytion one. Now syncytion one is a protein that is very important in forming the human placenta, forming the syncytiotrophoblast of the human placenta. That is essential for placentation. But the theory here is that Taking the Pfizer vaccine, which is an mRNA vaccine, will cause antibodies to syncytion one and therefore antibodies against a placenta. Number one, the vaccine is an mRNA vaccine. Now an mRNA vaccine means messenger RNA. So it does not incorporate into your DNA, nor are you actually being given the virus. You will be giving a messenger copy that then gets translated into proteins to make antibodies. And so the antibodies in this case are to the spike protein. Most of us have heard that COVID has a spike protein. That's how the vaccine works. So first of all, there are a lot of amino acid sequences that are similar to other proteins throughout our body, not just syncytion one. And you're not hearing the conspiracy theorists go all crazy talking about it. Number two, this is completely unfounded. Just pretend for a moment that the spike protein was similar to syncytion one and therefore having antibodies to COVID would be like having antibodies to syncytion one. We would also then expect to see issues with placentation in pregnancy during or after COVID infections. And we actually have not seen this. So specifically what would be a telltale sign would be that women were having an increase in first trimester miscarriages. What we have seen is both in women who are asymptomatic, no symptoms but have COVID, no increase in miscarriage, in women who are symptomatic, who have illness, no increase of miscarriage. So it does not appear that a COVID infection increases the probability of miscarriage versus women who don't have it. Carriage. That's reassuring to those of us in the fertility world and to people who are trying to get pregnant. Therefore, if we don't see with the disease at all, and the vaccine works by causing antibodies, such as if you'd already had the disease. So the fact that we see no correlation between placental abnormalities and women who've had COVID is reassuring that the vaccine shouldn't cause similar problems as well. We've not seen a COVID disease causing higher rates of infertility at all. If it were to impact infertility by egg quality or something like that, that's going to be remarkably hard to study versus never going to be able to get that data. Because in order to check egg quality, you have to do IVF and you'd have to have an interpersonal comparison because everybody's quality is different. So we would have to check my egg quality with IVF, have COVID, go back through another cycle to see. And same thing with the vaccine. I, we'd have to compare it to myself. We're probably never going to have that data to say, does the disease or does the vaccine impact egg quality? Therefore, we just have to make the best decision with the data that we have. Even the debriefing materials from the Pfizer vaccine trial, there were pregnancies that happened in both the placebo and in the vaccine group. If the vaccine caused you to be sterile, even though these numbers are low, we would expect to see a lower or no number of pregnancies in the vaccine group compared to the placebo group, and they were essentially equal. So granted, those are small numbers, 11 and 12, but I think that further supports the fact that it does not appear that the vaccine is causing you to be sterile. What we do know is that COVID infection 
causes higher complications in pregnancy and male infertility issues. So we have seen a drop in sperm counts after COVID infection. Now we are presuming that this is like when men get sick overall, and then we'll see an increase after full recovery. But there are some infections that this change can be permanent and men can have azoospermia or no sperm from testicular damage or scarring. A good example is mumps. COVID does impact male fertility. So we don't want to be sitting here saying COVID doesn't impact fertility at all. But what we know is that it doesn't appear to have any issues in miscarriage rate, in fertility rates in women. And we are seeing a drop in sperm counts in men. Now, the COVID vaccine has not been correlated with a drop in sperm count, but notably, lack of data is not data, it's just lack of data. Should you get the COVID vaccine if you're trying to get pregnant or if you're already pregnant? That's a complex decision. Here's what I'm saying. Everybody's risk is different. Your risk and my risk is different. An ER nurse versus somebody in tech who works from home, they have different risks of contracting the disease. What we need is what's called shared decision making. That means you and your doctor talk together and make the decision that is best for you. The vaccine's not been studied in pregnancy. And in the UK right now, pregnant women are excluded. Some hospital systems are excluding frontline workers who are pregnant from getting the vaccine. The FDA has not said that this is going to be a universal case, but the truth is everybody's situation is different. I'm not sitting here advocating for mandated vaccination for everybody for the COVID vaccine. I'm not. What I'm saying is that the Facebook article that said the COVID vaccine causes female sterilization is a scare tactic. And we have to keep perspective when we read something that seems sensationalized, does it really make sense? So in short, if you don't want to take a COVID vaccine that is completely your choice. And that's what I'm advocating for, that it is your choice. What I don't want is hypothetical risks of a vaccine that are completely unfounded in science and don't even make sense be the reason that somebody is afraid to get a vaccine that can be life-saving because COVID, as we know, is a very serious disease. Yes, we haven't studied COVID long-term. It hasn't been around long-term and we haven't studied the vaccine long-term because it hasn't been around long-term. So will we get more data as time goes on? Of course, that's how this whole pandemic has been. And just to drive from the point, an amino acid sequence that matches four out of five proteins is not very much. You're going to need to match more than 50 to 80 amino acid sequences in order for there actually to be a host antigen response. And we would expect to see an increased risk of placental issues due to COVID infection and an increase in early miscarriage, which we're not seeing. So yes, we always want to be cautious anytime there's something that is newer, a vaccine, a medication, and what the potential implications could be. I take reproduction seriously. There's tons of medications I don't let my patients use because we don't know what the potential risks are. However, in each strategy, we want to share decision-making between doctors and patients and evaluate the potential benefits and the potential risks in each individual situation. And we can put to rest the claim that COVID vaccine is female sterilization, false claim, not true, no evidence to support that. We should not be using scare tactics to harm women. Women's health is sensationalized enough. Again, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to the channel, always trying to spread more fertility-based facts and educate you about your body. Follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD, and you can always listen to the As a Woman podcast for more in-depth fertility information. Thanks, friends.